This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the publishing day to all of you. As we, you know, plow through this I guess we're still in winter um, of the of the new year, this new decade. I always love to find new things, new packages, and our guest today is one of those. Not only is he an author, but he is published in both the self-publishing arena a gazillion years ago in the traditional arena, um, and he's actually right on tour with his newest book, and we'll talk a little bit about today. He's a distinguished professor of creative writing at UC Riverside. He, he is the founding editor and chief of the Los Angeles Review of Books, um, and he's also a founder of what's known as the LARB Radio Hour uh, and the Quarterly Journal. So our guest, Tom Lutz, knows writing. He knows publishing. He knows what a good book looks like. He knows how a good book should flow and read. And he's R for this hour for Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. So, Tom, welcome to the program. Thanks, Judith. Uh, thanks very much for having me. We are, you're, now, I mentioned that you're actually out on tour. So tell us about your new book right now. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, the new book is my first novel. I've written, uh, I've published a uh, half dozen or more uh, nonfiction books, but this is my first novel. It's called Born Slippy. It's a uh, noir thriller uh, that's set in Connecticut, California, and several countries overseas, Indonesia, mm-hmm. Japan, Taiwan. Uh, mm-hmm. and it's kind of trots around the globe. Um and it's got a very, very bad man at the center of it. Do, do we care about this bad man? Are we going to eventually care about him? Well, I think we care about his uh, his sometime friend, um, the, who is the who is our main character. His name is Frank, and Frank is uh, is a bit of a loser when we meet him, but he kind of is pulling his life together, and he keeps running into our our bad man, whose name is Dimitri. And uh, Dimitri is um, works for him when, uh, when Frank is building houses, and Dimitri is the is is the is the bad guy who is somehow drawn to Frank because Frank is uh, his conscience and his his better self. Um, so we care we care about Frank and we care about Dimitri a little bit in the same way that we care about mm-hmm. uh, Tony Soprano and Walter White from Breaking Bad and um, a lot of our our anti heroes. We we we. We have a soft spot for sociopaths. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> as, as readers and uh, as TV watchers, as film watchers, we mm-hmm. love we love these bad guys. Hmm. All right. And so we'll go on. Well, it's kind of my type of a book. That's why I was I wanted you to talk a little bit about it. And and mm. but but even as naughty as some people are, I always want to think maybe it doesn't happen, but I want to think that there is some redeeming value somewhere buried in here that maybe will surface. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think that. Tend to see the. I mean, these these people do have some redeeming value. I mean, my my Dimitri is a, is, is a charming sociopath, in the same way that uh, Jim Jones from Jonestown was, or most of our most of the cult leaders. Um, they're they're charming, or they wouldn't be able to start a cult. And um, and <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> and, uh, and he tells a good story, and he's and he's fun, and he's funny. <clears throat> the the uh, problem is that you are appalled um, and repelled at the same time that you're laughing at him and, and enjoying. 
uh, th- well, exactly. But but you're intrigued. You're pulled in. What is he going to do next? Yes. Or exactly. will he surface? Which is what a good writer has to do. So that's yeah, that's guess, what it's about. I guess I would also add that there's there's something about um, about these these uh, bad guys that we like because we would i think most of us would like to be able to do whatever we wanted whenever we wanted and that's what these guys that's the that's this thing that the this fantasy that these guys offer us you get to do whatever you want even if it's killing someone even if it's just taking what you want no and damn the consequences well let and 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 thinking about your book tom tell me what was your process as you put it together I mean, it's it. I don't know. A lot of people who do reviews, um, a lot of people who are in the big book business are almost voyeurs sometimes. And I mm-hmm. bet you you have seen more books than Hogan has goats that you would you probably thought, <laughs> oh my God, I could have done better than this. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, <laughs> uh, that I think that that's true. Where does that phrase that more than Hogan has goats come from? That's great. I, I, you know, it comes out of my mouth, but I don't know where <laughs> I picked it from. Where else? Yeah. It, the uh, other one I if, say, I have to be careful because for some publications it may not be appropriate. But Hogan's has goes for work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, um, yes, I, 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 I sometimes uh, have, as, as things come across my desk over these, over these years, uh, I've certainly kind of, fixed uh, uh, the problem that I had that kept me from getting my my first novel done for many years, which was that I was a literary professor, a literature professor. So I I taught the great novels um, from the the last several centuries to students. And I I would have Henry James or Toni Morrison looking over my shoulder as I as I tried to write a novel Ah, and reading and reading all of the stuff that comes over the transom. I thought, Mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah, yeah, I don't have to be Henry James. I could just be this person, I can, I can I can write as well as this person, even if I'm not quite Edith Wharton. Uh, but you can be Tom Lutz. Exactly. And, and maybe that's the first lesson for all our listeners: is to honor your own voice instead of trying to mimic somebody else's. Oh yeah, and and I think that uh, not only should should one, I think that in a way we don't have much choice. Most of us write the way we write and we have the perspective on the world that we have. And, you know, if we try, I I tried writing screenplays for a while and I just don't have that kind of Hollywood commercial. uh, I I don't have a knack for it. So it it didn't really happen. I sold a couple of things, but it Mm -hmm. it it, it did all right, but I didn't, I couldn't quite crack that code because it wasn't me. Ah, but so here's what we're doing. We're kind of developing a little list of of lessons here from honoring your voice, not someone else's. But the second lesson is you need to figure out what your path is. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. screenwriting wasn't your path. No, turned out. <laughs> yeah, and and you know I've had I've had a, a a you know a screenplay kind of in my head too, but it's just not. I keep thinking I what I need is a partner to bounce stuff off of to get this mm-hmm. baby done. I mean that is really, you know what I I think it would be more fun and play with as these women are naughty and not not yes. the naughty naughty way, but doing nasty things to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, the the um. The, there's a reason why um, most television shows have a writer's room where they work together mm-hmm. to make things make things happen. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. it is a collaborative medium. The novel, it is the novel is, is a voice voice medium. It's a it's a medium that's based on a on a, on a singular vision, but the the TV and film not so much. Which is exactly right on that. So find the right medium um, and maybe get help with it. <laughs> Maybe that's uh-huh. what you need. All right, to get help. All right. So, what are some of the other things, your takeaways, ahas, that you in your own writing path? So, this didn't. This is not something you just whipped up. You took a, a while to get it out. Oh yeah, this. Uh, I, I was working on this for maybe as long as ten years um, from from original conception. I I I, I wrote uh, 
I tried it a couple of times. It never quite got too far. I finally put a draft together. It was in third person. I decided that it, it would work better if it was in first person. So I changed mm-hmm. it to first person and then, uh, I decided that that was a mistake, and so turned it back to third person. Uh-huh. I chopped up the chronology, moved that around. Uh, um, it's it's taken about you know seventeen different forms over the years, but I finally got the got the one that uh, the one that worked for people. And so, when you say over the years, how many years are we talking? I think it's I think it may have been as many as ten. Whoa! I did write, I did write and published three or four other books in that time. But but uh, the, the novel kept roiling and kept boiling and kept uh, simmering and finally finally was cooked. Uh-huh. So you're on tour, Tom. I re- we, we've got about two minutes before our first break, but I remember doing tour with my books years and years ago when I was publishing with mm-hmm. New York. Um, is it still as grueling? Are you feeling it's grueling for you or... Um, are you able to get a little downtime between being up, bright, perky, pushing, promoting? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't like promoting. I don't like, uh, I, oh. I don't like being promotional, but the, but the actual events are you just, you go and you read a section or you have a conversation with, a, with another author, and, um, or, a, or an interviewer of some kind. And, and those are all perfectly pleasant and fun and, you know, I don't mind doing them. Um, it's the kind of arranging things and and uh, and writing press releases and all of that stuff that's that's a little grueling. But the, and the being on the road itself, I I enjoy. I've, I'm a traveler. I, you know, two of my m- most recent books are, are travel books. Um, I love being on the road. When we come back, all right, Tom, when we come back, let's talk about some of your other books as well. This is Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. With me is Tom Lutz. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out... You will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative, no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author U extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at authoru.org. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success... You want Judith Bryles as your book coach. 
Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me today is Tom Lutz. He is an author. He's published both in the self arena, but he's now doing the traditional. He is a book reviewer. He is a professor teaching people how to write or how to dissect or fill in the blank. And he is the author of a brand new book just out. And if you like a little suspense, a little mystery, a little intrigue, you might want to pick up a copy of Born Slippery. So, uh, Tom. He is on tour, actually, as we chat. So he's in New York City. Um, and Tom, what's your typical day like that you that is laid out for you in promoting your book? Well, uh, every 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 day is different. Um, uh, sometimes I'm talking to oh, Dr. Judith Bryles on her radio show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm doing that from a uh, kitchen in an apartment in uh, Manhattan. Um, and uh, and tonight I'm at the uh, the Strand Bookstore, or I guess it's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night I'm at the Strand mm-hmm. Bookstore. It's a wonderful uh, bookstore downtown. Yeah, downtown. It's a New wonderful bookstore. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, I'm doing um, answering. You know, there's a number of uh, I'm doing a bit of a blog tour, so I'm, I'm answering interview questions. In some cases live, uh, some cases on the phone, in some cases um, just uh, responding in email to the questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm doing a bunch of those. Uh, Tobias Carroll, who runs uh, Volume 1 Brooklyn, which is a literary magazine here, is interviewing me tomorrow uh, in a coffee shop. So it, mm-hmm. it, 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 I take all different forms uh, depending on uh, what, what's needed. Mm-hmm. How do you mentally set yourself up for an interview, or do you? Do you just show up and it just happens? It pretty much just happens. Uh, like I said, this is my uh, seventh or eighth book, so I've done a lot of interviews about the books. And because I run Los Angeles Review of Books, I I interview a lot of authors. Um, that takes more preparation because I have to <laughs> read their books. Uh, to get ready to, to do the interview. Um, in my case, of course, I have read my book already, so that saves on the prep time. <laughs> oh, I, I, I hope so. It, it, it's like I used to say with some of these people, so have you, you know, your book's got your title on it, but have you read it? I mean, maybe, you, <laughs> did, or did someone else write it for you? <laughs> All right, yeah, so... It's, so- so I, I and I I am I teach uh, so I'm used to uh, speaking to people um, I I find it uh, I, I like talking to people about literary topics so I, I find it very kind of easy and and, and fun. Mm-hmm. And it is fun. I think it is fun too. But what Tom is out for all of you in the in the old days and you've heard me say this in the past. I was a kept author when I was with New York and they would send me out on these author tours and I would have a personal escort. I never had to worry about renting a car, driving myself somewhere. Uh, I'm the first to admit that I don't have an automatic GPS in my system and that um, and they actually made sure that I, you know, had something to nibble on um, or at least I got maybe, a, you know, a bowl of soup at lunch, that kind of thing. And that it's different today, isn't it, Tom? That's not the way most book tours, if you're going to do it, are. No, those days are over, except for, you know, a very small number of uh, top authors. Um, yeah, this... And that's, that's not me. Uh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm what we call a mid-list author. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, everybody is either a top author or a mid-list author. There's no kind of bottom of the list author. I mean, I'm sure there is such a thing, but we never talk about it. 
Um, so I'm a, I'm a mid-list author, and and uh, and as such, any tour that happens is the result of. Uh, I mean, my publisher will will say that such and such a bookstore would like me to appear, but they don't fly me there. They don't give me an escort. They don't certainly don't feed me. <laughs> I'm so um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, yeah, that, that, the the kind of glory days of the of the author getting flown around the country, are, and it, it well, makes sense because the the publisher can't make their money back on it. So when when you see an author that's on an author tour that the publisher is paying for, it's because um, that author has the ability to go somewhere else if they'd like, and so the 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 publisher loses money on the author tour in order to keep the author on their list. Mm-hmm. So, so it's, it, it's, a, it's a way yeah. that publishers maintain their relations with their author, but they know that they're going to kind of lose money on it. If it could cost you a thousand dollars to send somebody to a city to have a reading at a bookstore, and you sell, even if you sell a hundred books or two hundred books, you're losing a lot of money. All right. So I think all of you need to really understand there's a, there is the money side of this and how much does it cost? So what Tom has really done the reveal, even though he's, you know, he's gotten wonderful credentials. He's a great writer. His books have done well. He's not the David Baldashi or the John Grisham or the fill in the blank celebrity who they do front all those things for. So if you want to get back in the groove, if you want to get out there, you, you need to realize this goes in called the marketing budget and, <laughs> and, and this is the promo and, and the Tom's reveal of it's, you know, you're looking at like a thousand dollars a day when you think about the logistics, about getting there, about hotels, about food, about, you know, who fill, you know, who knows what you're going to have to fill in the blank. But that is what I, I think that's a typical budget. Um, he may, he may have an Uber driver taking him everywhere. You know, I don't know how you're getting around and about, Tom, but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes it's the subway. Sometimes it's, uh, it's an Uber. Yeah. yeah, and you have to know. So, and then there's the whole side of it as an author, if you're doing a tour and you're including uh, bookstores or you may be doing special events. Um, mm-hmm. and, and Tom, I haven't read your book. I don't have your book in hand. Um, so I'm one of those interviews who will reveal that. I've explored your website. I've gone through it. Um, and I thought, you know, I want to see if I can get a hold of this guy. And that it is a book that I will get because you are writing kind of in a, a, in a genre that I like. So I, I, I am one of your readers types things, but it's, it, I think that also most of you need to realize that most people who interview you, if you do, you can put together your own book tour. You might be very successful at it, you know, listener, but that, um, most people who interview you have never read your book. And and so yeah, Tom, yeah Tom's it's, it's a mix. It's a mix. Um, you know, because people like your show has has its purpose, um, uh, which is to you know take keep people abreast of what's happening in the publishing world. And yes. That's different than a than a than a literary show where you know Michael Silverblatt at Bookworm, for instance, he always reads the book before he interviews someone. But mm-hmm. as you say, most people have other reasons for having the author on, and it's not just. It's not just a kind of uh, a, a literary gap fest. It's a there's something else happening. Yeah, there is something else happening, or it ties in with an event. I did a lot of interviews that way. All right, so you're you're getting ready to go to a wonderful bookstore called The Strand, um, and they have what's great about a, 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 someone that has that reputation. They have a fan base, and they they will bring in people. But I suspect Tom. You probably let others know that you're in town and come meet you there or something like that. Would that be true? Yes, yes. You have to you have to do a lot of um, uh, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and and a lot of uh, emailing friends and emailing acquaintances and emailing friends to ask them to email their friends. <laughs> and yeah, you have to kind of beat the hustings to get people to to book events, and that's true. Yeah, almost anywhere. There are very few places. I mean, I know I've been at bookstores um, for different books of mine where there have been, you know, four or five people in the audience. And oh, I know. Thousands. Yeah. 
So. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so uh, if you don't do the work, uh, nobody will show up. Yeah, the the best thing is you can walk in a bookstore. I remember in um, in uh, Palo Alto, there was a wonderful, there still is a wonderful bookstore called Kepler's. And I remember walking in, yep. and the the manager said, "There's a lot of people waiting to hear you." That makes an author's heart sing. <laughs> yes, the, it's yeah. not the two cousins and their three friends. <laughs> right. All right, well, so then, in, in, with some, with some, in some cases, uh, for instance, um, my book uh, on, on the history of tears, a book called "Crying: The Natural and Cultural History of Tears," that uh-huh. got a big um, New York Times book review, review, and was nice. reviewed in the Boston Globe and the Chicago Tribune. And this was back when newspapers reviewed books, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and so I, it, it got a lot of press, and that helped fill rooms uh, on the on the tour. So when I went to Seattle or Portland, there were 50 or 70 people in the room. Um, and so if there's enough pre-existing press, that helps. If there isn't, then you really have to kind of get, get the people there yourself. You do have to get them. And I, and I think that you're being willing to do that reveal because, you know, you're, you're a strong – Midlist. I, I was a midlist author too. Um, mm-hmm. That you're a strong midlist. You do have a following. You do have a name. You have a book that's been well received in the past, which always is a domino to help out. You know, let people know to shout out. Um, and yeah. I would encourage all of you to take a look at Tom's website because he really has details about his books. He's got a really excellent media kit on the site. And all you have to do is go to tomlutz.com, tomlutz.com, and really take a look at this because this is an upscale uh, to show that this is this is what you have to do, these kind of things, if you're really going to go out full bore um, with yeah. that. I, you know, it's uh, it's tomlutzwriter dot com I think, um, but it it, it um, th- that was put together for me by Nanda Daisu, who runs a, a literary services company called Coriolis Company, um, and so she she um, she made that website for me. I, I like I say I I don't like the purely promotional parts of it, so it was hard. I never quite got around to making one for myself. All right, um, so hold on to that thought because yeah. I'm going to give you a response back when we come back. Okay, great. <laughs> this is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success in the fall and winter judith bryles speaking unplugged includes judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days you will learn how to structure a speech how to create openings and closings how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books and you will get one-on-one coaching Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, 
business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. So everyone, we're back. Just a reminder, his website is TomLutzWriter.com. And, uh, and, and you really, you can see all, uh, it's an, almost an overload of a lot of different pieces that people can see from his past books, his current books, who he is, what he does, etc. So highly recommend you take a peek at that website. So one of the questions, uh, but what I was going to say when, when you say, when I hear authors say, I don't want to do sales, I don't want to promote, it's wine, 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 get, okay, here's, Okay, here's what I'm going to say. Get over it. If you want to sell books, you've got to realize you are you are changing from being the CWO, the chief writing officer, to the CMO, the chief marketing officer. Just like Tom revealed, he is the one that really is underwriting the national book tour for his book. He's paying for it. They are setting up initial contacts. His publisher is coming in and doing some add-ons, but it's in his ballpark whether or not it works or doesn't work. Would that be safe to say, Tom? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how committed are you to your book from, from evolving from the CWO to the CMO? So, um, and part of that is getting reviews. So I'd love to have Tom switch hats here and really talk about the Los Angeles Review of Books and and what they look for, how they could submit. Maybe those of you who are listening might have the perfect book to forward in. So, Tom, what do you look for? Yeah, the 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 main thing I would say to, to anybody um, marketing their book uh, is – Look at the the look at the publication that you want to be reviewed in, and see what they do. Um, it doesn't make any sense to send a, um, a, a, a a nonfiction book about how to build cabinets to the mystery um, book website because they're not going to review it. They only do mystery books. The romance um, websites only do romance novels. Um, and we have a we have a, a kind of set of things that we're interested in, and you can see what that are, what the, what those are just by looking at the website. Mm-hmm. You just run through, look at a few pieces, and you think, okay, yep, this is my this is my ballpark. I, I can I, this is the kind of sandbox I'm playing in already. Let's I'm going to send them a, a note on the website. You'll find and almost this is true for almost any website. You'll find uh, instructions for how to. Um, who to talk to about your book. So in our case, uh, we have the, all of our editors' emails on the website, on the About page, on, on the masthead. Mm-hmm. And if it's, a, if it's a novel, you send it to the fiction editor. If it's a book of poetry, you send it to the poetry editor. If it's uh, in the realm of politics, you send it to the politics editor, and, and so on. So the, the, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly clear and easy-to-use um, submission process. You're just writing an email. And then, of course, the question is, what kind of email do you write? Um, and we get, I don't know, all told, we get a couple thousand pitches a day um, of, of every kind. Uh, some are from, you know, are just kind of mass mailings from uh, publicists. Uh, some, And so we can look at them very quickly and, and pass through them. Of course, there's a dozen different editors looking at them, so we're not all looking at 2,000 every day. But we 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 tend to look at the email very very quickly, make a snap judgment about whether we're whether it's uh, worth reading the entire email or not, and uh, and moving on. And that and that means that your your email has to be um, crisp, clean, clear, 
focused um, and straightforward. So people try to do, sometimes try to do very kind of witty, uh, charming, introductory passages about that tell a little story and ease us into the into the book itself. Um, but by that time, you've lost a lot of editors and a lot of publications. You need mm-hmm. to say this is this this is a this is a nonfiction book about the publishing world today, for instance. Um, mm-hmm. And it is the, the most useful book on the on the market for for prospective authors who would like to understand how publishing works, uh, and therefore you should review it. Um, then and that's a that you know you want to be you want to sell hard, uh, you want to sell clearly, and you want to sell kind of right at the at the at the core of what it is that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Do, do you do you ever have uh, a memorable pitch that ever came to you directly? Uh, you know, we sometimes remember the really bad ones. Oh yeah, um, well, that, <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, uh, one started. Um, imagine if Hamlet was a mountain climber, and I just. I, I thought, well, no, I really don't have time to imagine that as a, as a mountain climber, and I, I kind of, I don't remember what the pitch was about, really. I don't, I don't know if it was a book about Hamlet or a book about uh, mountain climbing, but uh, it, uh, it was, it was a memorable first line, but not oh for my. a good reason. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well. <laughs> Yes. That, well, they're trying to get an attention. All right. But they, it went the wrong way. Well, I'm actually, as you're talking, I went to the, uh, your, the Los Angeles Review of Books website. So mm-hmm. for all of you, you would go to, um, you're going to spell it out, but it's LA, LA Review of Books dot org. Um, and when Tom was talking about who all the players are and who you would reach out to, you click on the About tab and then scroll it down and you'll find that there's someone who is a specialist in African literature and culture and then there is someone else who's a specialist in history and violence um, who is your contact there. So that's what you're going to look for. And then you're going to have to, if, if you don't think, well, you know, I do have violence, but I don't have any history in it. So, um, you have to maybe play around a little bit to find out. Maybe you belong in the, you know, in one of the other sections, but, but, uh, it's, there's a lot of options here. So again, it's the LA review of books.org. Explore the website. I've already signed up for your newsletter, Tom. Um, Thank you so and, much. <laughs> and, and, and your, uh, explore the about and, and just see what it is. Cause it's, it's quite an extensive website. So do that. All right. So when they submit to you, what you want them to do is to just make it, don't play games. Don't try to be cutesy, um, yeah. or, or funny, just what it is and, and go ahead yeah. and do the ask. And I think you should review the book. That's what I heard mm-hmm. you say. Yeah. All right. So clear, succinct. But because well, blank, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and that because can be because no one has ever um, written about um, a submarine commander in World War II mm. with uh, with this kind of uh, narrative verve, you know. So, you know, whatever whatever it is, or um, because nobody has um, because this because this this novel is uh, destined to become a uh, uh, on every romance reader's shelf in the country. If they can uh, get if they can get past the incredible romance controversy i i suspect you might have followed some of that on the yeah. reviews mm-hmm. whoa mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's been a whoa yeah <laughs> on, on what you that do may there be, that maybe why i'm uh why i'm uh thinking of it well yeah maybe it came into your deal so it is for all of you you need to know your genre or you need to know the offshoots yes. of your genre because nonfiction is pretty broad so um mm-hmm. you you delve down so whether it's that spirituality there's there's avenues you can go down whether it is recovering from something and maybe faith is a factor who knows but 
it's it, there's all kinds of things that you can play with here or just straight blatant this is mystery and and i noticed you even have a noir editor to send to i thought that was pretty cool tom <laughs> yeah well it's a it's an la genre i mean there are, there's yeah. a, a lot of the classic authors are, are california like chandler and hammett um mm-hmm. but uh it, we 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 kind of we, we think of it as our genre I guess you do. And, and I'm an L.A. girl. I was born in Los Angeles, so I'm totally right. in that. Yeah. All that kind of thing. All right. So we are really kind of exploring what what else in the review. So they do submission. And then what's what happens next? What do they send you? Um, we uh, when we when when people we have uh, two or three different things. One is that we get um, books in the mail. We get hundreds of books every day in the in the mail. Um, that mm-hmm. publishers are sending us because they would like mm-hmm. us to look at them and review them. Right. So the, uh, uh, one thing that, um, you know, you or you acting as your publicist or your publicist or your publisher can do is just send us a copy of the book. Um, and that will, we, we open all of those packages. We look at each, all of those books and we make a, make a yes, no decision about whether we're going to kind of keep trying to find somebody to review it or not. Um, and so you can you can send an actual physical copy of the book. That gets very expensive um, if you're doing it yourself. Um, so you, you might want to make sure that you've got some interest on the part of a publication before you go ahead and send a galley to them. Um, and- so you send you say so you send an email first and say, um, I would love to send you a, a, a galley. Is the, is this the right address? And rather than asking what the address is, you, you put the address that you know is there because that's on the website. Um, say, is this, is this the right address to send it to? It's just as a way to say, look, I know who I'm talking to. I know what I'm doing. Right. Um, and, and then you, and then you send, send the book only if they ask. All right. So, and they will, and they respond back fairly quickly. Am I going to assume that from uh, an email? They either, yes, they either respond very quickly or they don't respond at all. All right. So no response says I'm not interested. Would that exactly. be fair to assume? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. So I guess the third part is if you don't hear back, don't bug them. Um, you can you can send a, fo- a follow up. Um, to, uh, even you know the, the the fancy publishers do that with us. Uh, okay. For our Strauss Giroux and you know a Random House, they'll they'll send us a, a remind say, you know I, I I'm not sure whether you saw that we sent you a book the other day. Uh, I'm not sure whether you saw it. Uh, we, we really think. Then they'll give uh, give us a an one more shot, from a new review, and yeah, you know, try try to give us a here we go hit us again. Yeah, all right. So, so we'll, we'll be right back with Tom Lutz in our final segment and get a few more tips on book reviews and so much. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, and we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. 
Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book... If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so in our final segment here, so we have about 12 minutes, I wanted, uh, I told Tom offline that I wanted to ask him this question. So, Tom, when a book comes in, the, 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 the query went in, said, yes, you know, I'd like to send the book in, um, that first of all, how many books roughly, because you have multiple channels, you've got a blog, you've got a radio show, you've got your quarterly edition, you've got your online that you do books. How many books do you actually review, truly review a year? It comes it comes out to about 2,000. So that that's probably more than any, any um, you know, certainly more than the New York Times book review, more than the New York review of books, more than the London review of books. It's a it's a it's a lot of a lot of books. And yet, of course, a tiny fraction of what's getting published. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's teeny, a teeny fraction. So yeah, what makes a book stand out? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that is the, that is the $24, $64 question. That's right. What, what does make a book stand out? It's a, you know, I like to say that it's never been easier uh, in the history of the world to, to get a book published, and it's never been harder to get a book noticed. It's a um, there are hundreds of thousands of, of books published in the U.S. every year, um, even in with with regular publishers. Uh, there are um, millions um, millions published, um, counting all of the. Uh, self-publishing, so it's uh, it's very very difficult to get it published. You asked me during the break whether I I, I judged a book by its cover, and the answer is well, yeah. A lot of the times we do, uh, and and one of the things, especially if somebody's self-publishing, one of the things that you one should be very careful of is how they put a cover together. If we get a cover, uh, we get a book, uh, a galley, and, and the cover is. Um, you know, pixelated. It's a kind of low, low resolution um, thing where, where you can just kind of see that it's that's, that it's self-published. You can see that it's uh, not not had a professional designer involved. You see that it's not. We it's really hard for that book to make us even open it and take a look inside. The the cover has to be great, um, and that that's that's. True. Once once you once you get to a, a bookstore as well, if the cover is not grabbing people as they walk by, you're not going to have anybody looking at your book either. So, covers are important. The cover, of course, has a lot of marketing uh, information on it as well. It has pull quotes from from people that are uh, that are endorsing it. It has uh, has a description of the book. It has a lot of a lot of information that helps people uh, and helps us as a, as our reviewers. Uh, think, oh, you know what, I should, I should pay attention to this one. You know, I agree with you. I, I, I actually, if Larry, I'd love, oh, I do, do want your input on here. I see book covers with like a gazillion um, quotes from other people. Now, I personally know a lot of them have never read the book. There's publishers uh-huh. the best. And you know this, Tom, that the publishers, that they're in Judith, their you're so, stable. You're so cynical. <laughs> <laughs> that that they they're in their stable. Say, say, would you write a review on that? 
Um, mm. I, um, I'm kind of a marketing nut. So, and I, and you heard me say earlier, you've got to become the CMO, the chief marketing mm-hmm. officer. So I always tell my authors I work with, you got to know the pain of what your reader is. Now, for your type of book, their, their, their pain is I just need to escape for a few hours. I, I want a good, entertaining book um, that will get me into it, and I can dive in, and it's a page-turner. Um, and I want a book that I can fall in. You know, I open these covers, and I just fall into this baby. And so that's usually typically for what the fiction. For the for the nonfiction is, you're, you know, you're a problem solver. You're delivering solutions. You're giving insights you're giving ahas you're giving all those kind of things i want to see that stuff on the back cover i want you to pull me in with that copy back there you know mm-hmm. you know tease me you know i don't care if you're snarky or you're funny or you're insightful or um but that's what i'm looking for i don't really care about that what sam smith um says Unless Sam Smith has got such huge creds that my, you know, that my potential readers would absolutely recognize and say, oh, yeah, Sam says I'm in. But that's Mm -hmm. my tell me, um, am I too cynical? Well, I'm I'm not sure it's a complete either or. That is, I think that you're you're absolutely right that the that the job of the of the uh, blurbs and descriptions on the cover is different for fiction than it is for nonfiction. And I think it's different a little bit book to book by book. I would I would say that yes, my novel um, I I want to be a, a pure entertainment. I want people to love the experience of reading. I want them to get chills and thrills and and uh, weep and cry and laugh and every, everything. Right? I want it, I want it to be a kind of full emotional experience. But I also hope that uh, people learn something about the world as they read it as well. It's a, uh, it's it's not all just fun and games. It's about serious issues of, you know, sex and violence and money and you know, it's a it's it's a it's a it's a full full knot. So uh, it's not just that we want to learn things from nonfiction and we want to be entertained by by fiction. I think we want. Both, and we also want our nonfiction to be well written and to have insights into the into the world, not just their subject, and a kind of a, an, an authorial intelligence that comes across to us as we're reading it uh, that goes beyond the, the data. Um, so it's not not entirely either one. Mm-hmm. So covers do count. I guess that's the bottom line, everyone. <laughs> Your cover counts. Have Your cover a professional. Counts, yeah. Yeah, you need Absolutely. a professional book designer, not your best friend Charlie who likes to draw. And and and, <laughs> well, and yes, exactly. Yeah, and Charlie exactly. actually Charlie could be a stiller artist, but there's still techniques to book design for a cover that you need a pro's eyeballs and skill in half. I mean, that's I'm absolutely. really that's kind of a black and white thing for me, Tom. Covers yeah, count. Yeah, I, I... I absolutely agree. And, you know, for instance, one of the things now that we're, we're publishing books as well, LARP, LARP has a book line, um, LARP books. Uh, and we, and then one of the things that I never realized until, uh, I was reviewing some of these designs myself is that everything has to pass the thumbnail test now. So many books show up, you know, on, on uh, mm-hmm. Amazon or everywhere, you know, everywhere online as a thumbnail of the cover. And so you have to be able to read the title on the thumbnail. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you. I'm bowing at you because I tell all my authors when you get your book cover designs, reduce them to 25%. Is it readable? Mm -hmm. That's simple. If it's not, it's tossed. (laughs) Exactly. Um, and, and, and you know what, everyone, what we're talking about, this is not rocket science. I I think this is common sense, what we're talking about, at least in the publishing field. So it is, it is, but you know, it's, and it's very hard though, I think for most of us, uh, and I include myself in this group to kind of make the, make this switch from the, as you said, the, the chief, uh, chief, uh, creative officer, as that was mm-hmm. <laughs> CWO yeah. chief writing officer, but we can chief be the CCO. Officer, right? Look at chief creating <laughs> officer works for me too. CCO and yeah. CWO to the CMO. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's hard it's hard to make that switch because it's a very different part of your brain. It's a different part of your kind of personality that has to get tapped. Um, but it's a switch as that as I'm sure you you have made really clear, Judith, in in everything that you do. It's a switch that you have to make. So it, it's critical. We, I um, once a month, Tom, I do a kind of a, a pick my brain in my home, and I, I usually have at least twenty authors show up. Now it's great networking. It's a three hour. The coffee's ready. I have a flip chart up. They can put up any question. I've got the answer. But you know, when twenty people in the room, there's variables to these answers, and yeah that I walked them through the step-by-step this last Saturday of a campaign. Um, and from the posting, the setups, where you go, where you go to steal stuff that you can use um, legitimately, where you find your hashtags, where you really find your competitive authors and, and have to dig down and find the handles on their Twitter account so you could coattail on them. And finally, one said, you know, this could be kind of fun. And I said, I know it can yeah. be if you yeah. stop the resistance that you're in, that you have to sell because this is selling. It's positioning, yeah. it's influence. The thing that works the best for me is if I pretend I'm selling somebody else's book. If it's not, if it's not my book, I know how to do this. I know how to, I know how to make people think a book is worth, worth reading. Um, and I can, I can tell them why it's worth reading. But if it's, if I, if I think I'm selling myself, I get, I get, uh, shy. But if I'm selling somebody else, I'm not perfectly happy to go to, to make the big oh. pitch. Oh, Tom, that's always easy. I remember when I used to get things from my publisher. Well, tell us all about you. You know, you're by, and I'm going, you want me to talk about me? I can yeah. talk about you. All right. So <laughs> let's, we've got about a minute to go. Let's come back. Let's, let's sandwich this, bookend it, and come back to your brand new book. You're born slippy. So tell us, do all the major bookstores have it? Where do we go online? Where would you like us to go to support you? Yes, it, uh, it most most of your bookstores should have it. If they don't, t- tell them to get it in there. Um, the, uh, of course, it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all of those, and uh, IndieBound and Powell's, um, all of the all of the websites where you usually buy your books. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and it's a. Um, you know, you should buy ten or twelve copies and give them to your friends. <laughs> of course, you and and go post a review on Amazon, please. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tom, let's thank you so much for being with us today. Today, thank and you. Thank you, you are welcome. You're pleasure. welcome. Yeah, okay. And then again, his website, personal website is TomLutzWriter.com. The LA Review of Books.org is what you should be exploring. And I loved it that Tom said Indie Bound Books. I love Indie Bound. If you go to IndieBound.com, guess what? You put in the zip code and it will tell you what independent bookstores are there and you want to support them, which I'm a big believer in. So with that, Yes. I'm, this is Author You, your guide to book publishing. We'll be back with you next week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week.